Hello there. So it's 9.15 and I'm back on my Talk to Joe page. So welcome if you um, are watching this later on or indeed if you uh, if you come on. Um, so what I thought I'd talk about today is um, something that I came across over the weekend and some work that I've been doing. So uh, what I was listening to at the weekend was a podcast and it was talking about um, somebody who was overcoming a very serious um, case of, uh, of abuse that um, had happened to her as a young girl. And um, she talked about when she realised that she'd been repressing the memory of this and the steps that she went through in order to heal. So what she, um, she said, the first step was to actually recognise what was going on for her and the place that she was at um, in that moment. And that was when um, she actually admitted to herself that this abuse had happened. And then the other thing, the next step that she talked about, and this really resonated with me, is she was talking about um, honouring our wounds. And what she meant by that was, it's really important, I think, in accepting if you're um, suffering in some way, and to honour that suffering, to not try and, and push it away, to not maybe try and numb it out through um, eating or staying up late on the internet or having a, an, another glass of wine, but to actually admit that those feelings are there. And in admitting that, to then take on, um, to take measures to help yourself to to get better. And if you want to say um, hello to the people who have joined me, um, welcome and uh, I'll carry on, but do, do feel free to comment as we go along. So honouring our wounds, what we do in honouring our wounds is we actually then admit to ourselves what's going on and we maybe then seek the support that we need. And especially if it's something that's quite um, major, like this particular woman was suffering, there might be things like um, going for therapy. But I think also for us um, in our everyday lives, it's important to, to honour our wounds and to think to ourselves, what... What do I need to do to help myself? Hi Saz, nice to see you, thanks for joining me. So what, what can I do to help myself? And it might be um, coming for therapy, it might be looking on the internet, it might be watching my live videos, which is very nice of you, thank you very much. <laughs> but what, what are we gonna do to help ourselves to feel better? And so I thought I'd talk today um, about guilt and not feeling good enough, because I think this is a problem that most of us will have at some point in our lives. And in fact, if we don't ever feel a sense of remorse and guilt, um, we're probably sociopaths. So actually a little bit of guilt is probably quite a good idea. But it's important when we're thinking about guilt to differentiate between guilt and shame. And so the psychologists made quite a, a good definition. They say that guilt is about when you feel that you've done something wrong and it's a specific um, behaviour that you want to address and that you want to put right and which you know that maybe you can do something about um, and make a real change. You might want to make amends or to apologise and it's sort of focused on, on making amends to the people that have hurt you. And then there's shame and shame is not so much the feeling of I've done something wrong but more the feeling of I am wrong and it's that feeling of you know I, I'm just hopeless, I'm bad, I can't do anything and it's that feeling of not being good enough and I think probably many of us actually suffer with a feeling of shame rather than guilt. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about, about guilt to start with and the thing about guilt is it can come about through different processes and one of the things that happens to us is um, we can be brought up to be, um, to be achievement oriented you know, our parents want to encourage us to do well, they praise our achievements. And that means that we then begin to measure our worth in terms of our achievements. And then um, we can become quite perfectionist. And when we become perfectionist, we then begin to think about failing. Um, and, and that's where that, that feeling of, of not good enough can come in. Sorry, I'm adjusting my paper here because I've, I've got some stuff to tell you. Um, but with, with guilt, it's, um, it's worth asking when we're thinking about um, 
the, the guilty feeling we've got is to do a reality check and actually ask where that expectation is coming from and to think, is this what I want or is this more what I've been brought up to think I should want? Um, and so you can check out against your own values whether or not this is actually something to feel guilty about. So an example I was reading yesterday was someone who was brought up in a home where her mother washed the floors every day um, and she only washed the floors once a week and um, you know she felt guilty about that because she felt she ought to wash the floors every day but of course that that actually wasn't her standard that was her mother's standard so you reality check and you think to yourself is this something that I that, that sort of goes with my values and that I want and if it's not then perhaps we don't actually need to feel guilty about that any longer and another sort of part of guilt that I think is worth mentioning at this point is, um, is sometimes we can get guilt tripped um, by people. So other people might want to make us responsible for their feelings and they might say something to us um, that makes us feel that we can't say no to them. But in actual fact, what's happening is we're, we're feeling guilty about saying no. And that's because they're trying to get us to meet their needs. And um, we're in this sort of position where perhaps we've always met their needs in the past. And so we feel terribly guilty if we then say no. But they're not God. They're, they are perfectly capable of sorting out ways of meeting their needs. And we don't actually have to look after them the whole time. We are allowed to say to ourselves, is this the correct thing for me to be doing at the moment? Does this fit in with where I'm going and with my values? Um, and whilst obviously it's important to um, to live up to our um, values maybe of helping other people and looking after other people, there comes a point where we have to think to ourselves, oh, is this something that, um, that actually fits in with my values? And sometimes, hi Leanne, nice to see you. Um, yeah, sometimes it's really helpful to think to ourselves, is this something that fits in with where I'm going at the moment? Because if we say yes to everything, what can then happen is we become resentful and we begin to um, do the things that don't fit in with our values and we're not able to do the work that we actually really feel we should be doing. And so although it's sort of difficult sometimes to say no, especially if there's someone there who's who's um, trying to to manipulate, manipulate us or make us feel guilty, um, it's really important that we keep our eye on where we want to go and what we're trying to do because then we make space. By saying no, we're making space for the things that we should be doing that we feel fit in with our role um, of what we should be doing in our lives. And it means that we're free to then put all our energy into the things that, that really fulfil us and that maybe help people in the way that we really feel we should be helping them. So thanks for joining everybody. Um, yeah, so uh, what else do I want to talk about? So that's um, where the expectation's coming from and am I being manipulated? Um, the other sort of thing to add there is that if you are somebody who's um, easily um, manipulated and find it difficult to say no, is you're someone who probably does actually take a lot of responsibility in life. Um, and there's no need to feel guilty because you're probably doing a lot already. Um, and then the other thing to say is when we have done something that makes us feel perhaps sad, you know, and that we've hurt someone, obviously, you know, we want to be able to maybe make amends and, you know, it is important to say sorry if we need to say sorry. But also I think, and this is really important, and I think this uh, sort of is where we begin to cross over to this feeling of shame and of not being good enough is to accept your humanity and um, you know that's something I'm just gonna keep on banging on about in every live feed that I did um, because we are just human we are imperfect um, you know we do make mistakes that is that's what happens we make mistakes and so you know we are um, human we will make mistakes and in a way, you know, if we apologise to somebody, actually what we're doing is we're accepting our humanity. And sometimes, you know, when we admit that we've made mistakes, that's really helpful for other people. Um, and it's one of those things that is a sort of me too. And uh, I related in a live feed a couple of weeks ago how I 
was feeling quite sad and guilty about something that had happened when one of my children was very young. And my friend, who was very compassionate, um, said I did exactly the same thing. I, I did the same thing at that age. When my child was that age, I remember doing it as well. And that really helped because it made me feel as though, you know what, it's not just me. You know, mums do find themselves at their wits end sometimes. And being able to say me too is a really helpful thing for people. So don't worry about admitting your mistakes because quite often that can help someone else. Um, but I think in all of this, it's also important, as I was saying on the live feed on Thursday on my other page, it's also important to really recognise what we do well and to recognise that we're not just um, one dimensional. Um, you know, we can feel so bad about stuff. Again, this is to do with shame. Um, and we can take something that we've done wrong and, and make that into this really big thing. When in actual fact, it's just one thing we've done wrong. It's important to recognise the context of what we've done wrong. It's important to recognise that at that point in time, we were doing the best that we, that we, were, we could at that particular moment in time and to remember the context and to remember that we're human. Um, but also not to make that just one dimension or not to think, well, that one thing means I'm a really bad person. To think, yes, I made a mistake, but there's so much more to me than just that mistake. And to think about all the other ways in which we do well. Um, and one of the things I read yesterday in working on this subject of guilt is to think about, you know, when you are feeling particularly down, to actually think about out, um, the good things that you've done and to maybe keep a journal of the good things that you do do. I keep a box of um, cards that I get from clients and little messages that they give me. So I, I do that and um, I can, if I'm feeling particularly down, I can get them out and I can read the messages that I've got. It's sort of like a keepsake box. And I can see that I have helped people. And even if I've made a mistake, I can see that in the past I have helped lots of people. And the other thing to do with making mistakes is also to, um, to be careful of being perfectionist and not, um, and not sort of think we've got to help everybody. 100% of the people that we work with we're going to help. We probably won't. We're going to help a certain percentage of them. And I think it's important to bear that in mind. And also to know that the more we work at our skills, the better we're going to get. Um, and so it's really important to hold that in mind in all sorts of areas of life, whether it's in our work, in our parenting, in our relationships. You know, the more we work away at things, the better we're going to get. You know, that we make mistakes, we learn from mistakes, and that helps us to be better. So never give up. <laughs> okay, lovely. So I think I'm going to, um, to finish there. Um, I, I'd just like to um, add that I am doing some sessions at the moment that you can, um, if you want to talk about feelings of, um, of feeling guilty and trying to um, overcome guilt or if you want to work on that sense of shame of not feeling good enough. Um, there's, there's several different ways that you can um, contact me. That's right, Sandra's just saying um, never give up. Yeah, that's so true. Keep going. Um, so if anybody would like to speak to me, I'm offering um, a 45 minute free session on getting rid of guilt. Um, and you can um, do that by, you can uh, contact me via my um, Facebook page and you can actually schedule yourself in via my acuity scheduler which at the moment is on my um, website page thegoodenoughmum.com so if anybody's watching this um, either now or on replay and would like to talk about those feelings um, I'm offering a, um, a free 45 minute coaching session on that and obviously if you're interested in face-to-face -face counseling then then do contact me and you can contact me via my Facebook page Okay, thanks for watching and thanks very much for all of you who've joined me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.